Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today, and especially to Councillor Mullins, family and friends. Um, this is the first time we've ever had a mayor installation uh, virtually, uh, but needs must, and as long as we're keeping ourselves health uh, safe and well, that's the most important thing. Hopefully, as we get through the year, Hello, we'll have everybody. time to be Thank able to join us today, get together and, and celebrate. especially to Councillor Mullins. I'm asking friend. Councillor David Jolly. This is the first time we've ever put had a mayor installation to recognise Councillor John Mullins as the ceremonial mayor for as long, long as we're keeping the year 2020 uh, safe and well. That's the most Over important thing. Councillor Jolly. Hopefully, as we get through the year, we'll have to get together and celebrate. Especially to Councillor Mullins. I'm asking Councillor David Jolly. This is the first time we've ever had Mr. John Mullen be appointed to the position of Sergeant Mayor for the Municipal Year 2020 to 2021. Mr. John will be taking over the role in most unusual and challenging and circumstances, but I know he will make a great success of Mr. Sergeant Mayor for the reform he's duties in a diligent role. Mr. John, this point I also have to thank you, Chairman Mayor, for continuing in the role of the Sergeant Mayor for the Year 2020 to 2021. John will be taking over the role in most unusual and challenging and circumstances. Worsley College. Whilst working as a at a private car park, he did some computer work for management and was then offered that work full time. He went on to get an ONC, HNC, and a degree in computer science. He later became a senior IT uh, manager with an American company and traveled to the US and Europe. He also achieved further professional qualifications. He has continued to work in IT, culminating in temporary, albeit long-term contracts with the NHS prior to his retirement. Sadly, John's parents passed away in 1999 and 2000, and a few years later, he lost his brother, Eugene. In 2001, John and Michelle joined the Labour Party and soon became active in their local ward of Barton. I first met them soon after uh, I became a councillor for the ward in 2002. Very quickly, John and Michelle took up positions in the ward such as chair and secretary, and they were also active at the Talbot Catholic Club and also helped to run junior football clubs in the area. In 2004, at the all-out elections following boundary changes, John became a councillor for Barton Word along, Award alongside myself and Nev Clark and on the retirement of Ken Memory. I recall a couple of years earlier, David Lancaster said to me that there were a couple who had joined the party and who had every prospect of becoming active uh, uh, in the party and would be suitable council candidates in the future. When John was adopted as a candidate, I also recall David saying, actually, it was Michelle I was more thinking of. Of course, Michelle did become a councillor for the ward herself from 2011 to 2015. Uh, since 2004, John and I have been co-councillors for Barton alongside Nev Clark, then Norbert Potter, Michelle and now Michelle Barnes. John has always been diligent in his work as a councillor. He has also been an executive support member and a scrutiny panel chair. He has also continued to hold positions in the Labour Party as chair of his local ward and for a number of years as secretary of Worsley and Eccles South constituency Labour Party. John is a real community councillor. He works with local groups and has a particular interest in and still has a particular interest in junior football in the Patrick Croft area. In addition, he and Michelle organise numerous community social events, which are a great way of keeping in touch with local people. Being a councillor in Barton can be a bit of a social world. There is turkey bingo nights, Christmas turkey bingo nights, together with Easter bingo, killer karaoke, where the councillors are roped in as judges, which can be very daunting as people take it very seriously and object to your marks. Uh, there are race nights for the Mayor's charity, children's parties at various times of the year, especially Halloween, and of course, the pensioners' Christmas meal funded from the bingo. Unfortunately, all these have been on hold for the last few months and hopefully they will return in the future. 
John is very proud of his family, especially over the last few years, his grandson, Jack. He's very fond of a quick half, as those who see his Facebook page will know. There's, well, there's also as well his love of sci-fi, Star Trek, and at Christmas, his Elf on the Shelf. John's chosen charities are the Andrew Cook Music Award Trust and Memorial Fund, named for the late grandson of former councillor and ceremonial mayor Christine Hudson. The Salfordian Trust in Southport are providing respite and holidays for all the Salford residents and Salford by the Sea providing holidays for children, uh, for Salford children. I know that John will be a great ambassador for Salford and I hope that as soon as circumstances permit, he will be able to get out more in the community where his straight, great strengths lie. He will be ably assisted by Michelle as mayoress, who will do her best to keep him in line. Therefore, once again, it gives me great pleasure to move that Councillor John, John, Mullen, John Mullen be appointed as ceremonial mayor for the municipal year 2020-2021. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Jolly. Now, Councillor Michelle Barnes, I believe you're seconded in the proposal. Thank you, ceremonial mayor. Members of the council, ladies and gentlemen, today it gives me great pleasure to second the motion for John, Council Muller, and his good lady, Michelle, to the ceremonial mayor and mayoress for the municipal year 2020-21 which I know he has looked forward to for many years. I would like to start by saying I first met John and Michelle when we had an issue in the ward and I made it my business to contact our local councils to seek their support. John and Michelle, as ever, being well-known figures in the Barton community, was quick to react and respond and assist us residents. Before John knew it, I was chewing his ear off almost every day for nearly 12 months until we finally won our case with the council. During this time, both John and Michelle quickly picked up on my transferable trade union skills and convinced me to put myself forward and become a Labour councillor. I took their advice and having John as an agent, I was proudly elected in Barton in 2015 and have never looked back since. I was so lucky becoming a councillor in my own ward and having such fantastic fellow councillors who was also great mentors to me. Little did we know that our friendships would soon blossom and before we knew it, we were all having quick hours together, and which often turned into late nights out. Um, together, we have hosted lots of community events, as David said, such as children's Easter, Halloween and Christmas parties. And we've even, we even host a pensioners Christmas party for up to 50 residents, which is always greatly attended. And in some cases is the only event of, for some of the pensioners to get to. John would like people to think that these events were solely down to him though. But in reality, the brains behind the organising and planning in their house is normally down to little Michelle. <laughs> uh, who has the last say, and believe me, she might only be tiny, but she certainly wears a long pants, despite what John, John would like to say. <laughs> Michelle and John are a great team, though. Michelle being the organiser and John the entertainer. Michelle has planned events such as charity nights, Easter and Turkey Bingo for the ward, which have often attracted residents from across the city. These were held in the Rock House pub in the heart of the community, hosted by landlord Gary Jones and Mandy, his partner, who always cut the meals. It soon came to light, though, that these events were an opportunity for Councillor Mullen to dress up in his many costumes, being the child that he is, and he's often referred to by residents as Mr Pumpkin and Butterball, rather than Council Mullen, which is hilarious. John always loves a party, and for some of you, you know he loves his superheroes too. So on one occasion, he hosted a fundraiser night 
which will never leave my mind when he turned up as Mr. Fantastic in his latex Klingon suit. And my God, that was a sight for sore eyes, let me tell you. But I'll have to leave that image with you uh, and hope that he never gets it out of the cupboard again. <laughs> Excuse me. We have also been on many trips together and short city breaks. Um, sorry. Short city breaks. And, and as John likes to think that it's all about him, we let him take the lead in making the bookings and putting the itineraries together. Because as many of you know, John is an IT geek and he loves a bargain. Our first trip was to East Guinea Island where the Mullen clan still live and they made us feel very welcome. Force feeding us and making us drink 10 pots of tea before we could leave. And left and we left mat, uh, lasting impressions on the locals who sung along with us to Dirty Old Town in the pubs. <laughs> Our last trip, however, was to Berlin in December 2019, which was brilliant. John and my husband, Paul, have been brushing up on their German language, only to find out that the Germans didn't have a clue what they were saying. But it was hilarious to listen to them. As John is always, is, is always trying to convince um, people that it is all about him, um, again, we're left into the itinerary for the Barton to Berlin link and to be our leader. So as it's normally all about John and he wants to do... Um, he wanted to do uh, a visit to Engels and Ehrman statues. And as many of you know, in uh, our link to Berlin, is that we've got a high-rise block in Barton called Engels. And John is also a school governor at Godfrey Ehrman. Day, uh, day two, under John's instruction, we set off nice and early as we had to pack in the day, uh, with, uh, which required us to have a pre-booked day saver bus ticket. And we were going to visit the Holocaust Memorial and also the famous hotel where Michael Jackson hung his young child over the balcony of his room. So we made our way to the bus stop at the side of the apartment with John's large scale map and our backpacks with supplies for the whole day. Only to find that we didn't need the day ticket or the supplies at all. To John's amazement, as the bus stop was right outside the Holocaust Memorial and the famous hotel was right on the opposite side of the street facing our apartment block. John was totally deflated. But he even laughed about it. But the moral to this story is, don't trust John to draw your extension plans up for your properties because you could end up with a tower block on the side of your kitchen. <laughs> but on a more serious note, John and Michelle are beautiful people. Uh, with great big caring hearts. And they get great pleasure in always being there to help and assist anybody. Oh, sorry. They get great pleasure in, um, in helping and assisting anybody. They are and have been well known to friends and residents of the Barton, Winton and Eccles wards for many, many years. And as I said, once you meet them, it's so hard to forget them, not only for the commitment to the people, but also the lasting impression of John's costumes. But finally, John and Michelle will be fantastic ambassadors for the city, and I am so looking forward to being part of their mayoral charity team. There's a lot of work to be done, and Charlie and Tim have left uh, big boots to fill with the amazing £28,000 they managed to raise for their named charities. 
So I will make sure little Michelle continues to wear the long trousers and takes charge of any future itineraries. And John, you never thought you'd hear this, but today, mate, it's all about you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, apart from those many, many visions you've left us with, um, <laughs> we've heard a proposer and a seconder to the appointment of Councillor John Mullen and Mrs Mullen as ceremonial mayor and mayoress of Salford City during the year 2020-2021. Can I put that forward to no, the council? Karen Garrido wants to speak to the motion. Oh, sorry. Mrs Garrido, Councillor Garrido. I thought I'd put this hat on for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sat here with my hat on because Michelle um, wanted it blinded to wear me. a hat and you didn't want to be, me to be seen. <laughs> Ceremonial Mayor, <laughs> friends and family of John, it gives me great pleasure to support Councillor John Mullen um, to the Office of the Ceremonial Mayor 2020-21. That is all I needed to say. But after the mayoress asked if I would wear a hat, as I always do on mayor making when we're all together in the council chamber, hope that comes back soon. I would like to say a few more words about John, as my hat needs a longer outing. I sat with John as his deputy when he was chair of neighbourhood scrutiny. He was next, he, sorry, neighbourhood scrutiny. Nothing got past him. As a chair, he was fair, but oh boy, he could be very, very tough if it warranted, because I think both Charlie, both the ceremonial mayor and I were on at the same time. I was on the Dell steering group the afternoon he got the phone call to say that he was next in line for the deputy ceremonial mayor. I thought he'd won the, the lottery, but on second thought, I thought he'd got the part of Starship Trooper in the Star Trek video. Neither was true, but he was so delighted. When I was the ceremonial mayor, Michelle and John put on a couple of charity fundraising events for me at The Rock, which were absolutely fantastic. He then asked me to judge the Halloween fancy dress party. And as had been mentioned, that is a really ridiculous thing to do. Because as the old adage goes, you shouldn't work with children or animals. I have no need to tell you what happened when we didn't choose the right child. Well, thank you, John, for that. I'll remember in future and hopefully be, ask you to do the same. So just to be very careful, we are. So you need to be very careful because he is very good at extracting money from your wallet for his charity. Can I also say that behind every successful man, there's an even more successful woman. And that is what Michelle has always been. She's always been there for John and she's always been there for the community. And you've heard a lot of nice things about her today. And I'd just like to echo that. Finally, can I finish by saying in the first lockdown, when John knew I was feeling a little down, Michelle and him trudged all the way from Barton to Worsley with a couple of Mars bars for me. This is the kindness and the caring of the man we are moving today to be ceremonial mayor of our great city. Thank you, ceremonial mayor. Thank you, Councillor Garrido. I must apologise to you again. Your heart is beautiful, but I'm just blinded by the images Councillor Barnes set before us. So again, we have heard somebody propose the motion, somebody to second the motion that we Accept Councillor John Mullen as Salford Ceremonial Mayor 2020-2021. Can I pass it to the Council for agreement? Agreed. 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 Wonderful. Thank you. At this stage, I have to pass on to the Chief Executive, who will invite Councillor Mullen, the ceremonial mayor, to make his statutory declaration of acceptance of the post. Ceremonial Mayor. 
Stephen Wood, our Chief Executive. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Very much appreciated. Um, so as you suggested, I'm now going to ask um, Councillor John Mullen or Mr Pumpkin, as he's been referred to by Councillor Barnes. <laughs> um, I'll be formal. Councillor John Mullen, um, I'd be very grateful if you'd make your statutory declaration of acceptance of office uh, and sign the register, which I believe is in front of you. Thank you, Chief Executive. I uh, have here in front of me the uh, statutory declaration, which I shall now read from. I, John Mullard, having been elected to the office of ceremonial mayor of the city of Salford, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code of the conduct which is expected of members of the Sol of Salford City Council this day, the 20th of January. 20 Thank you, Chief Executive. Thank you very much, Councillor Mullen. Much appreciated. I'm just wondering, uh, Councillor McIntyre, whether you would like to officially congratulate the new ceremonial mayor before I hand over to the mayor's uh, officer. You're on mute, Councillor McIntyre. I absolutely would like to congratulate the new ceremonial mayor. Um, both he and his wife have been fantastic comfort and support to me during my term as councillor and supportive, very supportive of myself and my consort during their year of service. So yes, congratulations to both of you and to Councillor Mullen in particular. Thank you very much, Councillor McIntyre. Can I just add my thanks uh, to Councillor Mullen uh, for declaring um, that he is now the ceremonial mayor uh, of Salford. My congratulations. I'd just like to pass you on to the mayoral officer, Peter. Members of council, ladies and gentlemen, the right worshipful ceremonial mayor of the city of Salford for the municipal year of 2020 to 2021, Councillor John Mullen. Disappeared. I'm here. Just looking at the screen, my good lady wife disappeared yeah. into the background there. Okay, so here I go with my inaugural speech. I'm sure it won't match Biden's, but I'll try my best. So first off, I'd like to thank the residents of Barton Ward for their continued support and their trust in me. I will continue to serve them to the very best of my ability. I would also like to thank my fellow councillors, Michelle Barnes and David Jolly, for their years of support. And I agree with them, despite the dress up, that I, we made a good team. Members of the council, I thank you for your validation to take this honoured position. I will do my level best to hold fair and balanced council meetings. I know I will be supported by the many excellent officers of this council. Councillor Mullen, Councillor Mullen, could you put your camera on? I'm not sure your camera is on. Thank you. Is it on now? Yes, it is, Councillor Mullen. Thank you. Getting scared then. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, as I was saying, members of the council, thank you for your validation to take this honoured position. I will do my level best to hold a fair and balanced council meetings, although you're an unruly lot. I know I will be supported by the many excellent officers of this council. Just let me take a moment here to thank them for all their hard work during these unprecedented times. My family have been so supportive of my work in the council and encouraging me into taking up this role of ceremonial mayor. I could not have come this far without my fantastic wife, Michelle, and my two boys, Kelvin and Jonathan. I could not forget my grandson, Jack. He keeps me grounded and helps me in so many ways, not at least improving my high scores. <laughs> Together, 
my family, it's trials and tribulations, reminds me there is so much to do out there. And today, there is some sadness in taking this role. It is that our parents are not here to see us. My wife's mother, Pauline, and my parents, Patrick and Mary, have passed on before they could get to see this event. <clears throat> We have also felt the loss of our siblings, my brother Eugene and Michelle's sister Chantel. Before the event, my aunt Chris and uncle Andy past this month are also in our thoughts. We take comfort in the thought that they are looking down at us and are proud of us both. Okay, let's get on an up note here. To our families across the UK and Ireland and as far away as New Zealand, Hi Shazza, I hope you are well. A special hello to my grandnephew Caden, who I hope is watching. Please do a good job with your show and tell. And I look forward to one day attending your ceremonial mayor at Plymouth. I better mention my crazy sister-in-law Dariel, aka Dizzy, with a warning. Please refrain from dancing on the table during the ceremony. And I can't get away from the mention of my lot, my brothers Andrew, Patrick and Anton, and my sister Doreen, and my family's version of Dizzy. To the family in Sligo Island, I would say, I don't understand what my grandmother told me when I was young. She said to me, Goswa, always be a scholar. She was right, of course, because education is the best way to improve your circumstances. So it looks like the Mullen clan are good, smart people. I can't wait to see them all again. But no doubt property and hotel prices have gone through the roof now that Joe Biden's family are living in Ballinair. Karen Garrido, Councillor Karen Garrido, who was with me when I was offered the position, saw the huge, stupid smile on my face. It's been no secret that this is one role in the case but the chance to be the ambassador and advocate for this great city. The opportunity to go out, meet and thank the fantastic volunteers and the selfless heroes of this fine city is one of the greatest benefits. I am so proud of Salford and its people and it will be an absolute honour to serve them. In selecting my charity for this mayoral year, I wanted to help out soft audience of all ages, from children to the elderly. My charities are Salford by the Sea, the Andrew Cook Music Award and Memorial Fund, and the Salfordian Hotel. So please give generously when I come round and rattle my can in front of you. Don't make little Michelle turn you upside down. I've heard a few rumours that many are looking forward to a good do as they seem to think that I like a party. Well, it's not quite true. My wife, Michelle, loves to organise a party. I just go along and take all the credit. We both hope that very soon we can all put these troubled times behind us and we can all be together and raise a glass and catch a few funds at many events this year. Thank you, everyone. As we move forward in the agenda, I would like to join the council in their thanks to the outgoing mayor, Charlie, and his consort, Tim, for their hard work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Thanks. I'd like to move on to the agenda now. And at this point, I'd like to call the city mayor, Paul Dennett. Thank you very much, ceremonial mayor, councillor John Mullen. And thanks for your inaugural address and those words that I think touched all of our hearts and spirits. And your loved ones will be rightfully proud of you taking up this office today here in the great city of Salford. I'd like to take this opportunity to give my deep thanks and sincere appreciation to the 
outgoing ceremonial mayor, Councillor Charlie McIntyre. Charlie has been a fantastic ambassador for our city as ceremonial mayor throughout such challenging and difficult times. Charlie's municipal year of office in the city of Salford should have ended in May 2020. But due to the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on the activities of the City Council, he kindly agreed to continue in the role up until today's full council and this mayoral installation. Councillor McIntyre has carried out numerous engagements and events up until lockdown in March 2020 and also over periods of time when restrictions were eased. And despite the constraints of COVID-19, Charlie has raised a fantastic £28,000 for his nominated charities. Mental health charity Mind in Salford, Accessible Performance Organisation, Proud and Loud Arts, Period Poverty Campaign, the Red Box Project, and the Herschel Weiss Family Centre, which supports families across a wide range of issues within our Jewish community, including tackling poverty, domestic violence and parental mental health. This is truly such a fabulous achievement under such difficult circumstances as we continue to battle against COVID-19 in our city. I've got a great deal of respect for Charlie and I know the many visits across the city have been extremely appreciated and valued by many. There are so many lovely, lovely memories that have been shared with myself about Charlie's visits across the city. Charlie is a man of courage, integrity and independence. And I want to thank you for your efforts over the last 20 months. I'd also like to thank him for his unwavering commitment and devotion to our city and particularly the residents of Broughton Ward, as I know Charlie will be stepping down as a local councillor at the next local elections. Thank you, Charlie, for showing the true spirit of Salford in your time as Salford's ceremonial mayor. And from one mayor to another, I wish you and Tim all the very best for the future. Thank you, ceremonial mayor. Thank you, city mayor. Now, I would like to call upon Councillor John Murray to move the motion of thanks to the retiring ceremony, ceremonial mayor, Councillor Charlie McIntyre, and his consort, Dr Tim Warden. Uh, thanks, John. I don't know if this is a harbinger of the future, that you're going to miss me out in future uh, when I'm down to speak, but uh, I'll bear that in mind. Can I, uh, first of all, point out to us all um, whilst uh, John Mullen is taking office um, when uh, Biden is taking the presidency of America on, um, uh, Charlie, on the other hand, is leaving office on the same day as Donald Trump. Uh, and I hope there the comparison will actually end. I would venture to, suspect, uh, to suggest that in terms of council members, um, even in the Conservative Party, Karen, I suspect that uh, Charlie is more popular uh, than Donald Trump has ever been, actually. Um, and I think uh, that's something that he should be proud of. Can I also say that I think that um, it, it, to be serious for a moment, when Charlie took office, I think he thought that the most serious problem was to be persuading Tim to get back into the suit that he had abandoned when he gave up general practice. I don't think he necessarily appreciated the tremendous task that he was taking on. I think that he's had the hardest period of time uh, to deal with potentially since World War II, quite frankly, and the previous boroughs, uh, mayors during that period. I think he's actually um, discharged those duties um, with integrity, with fairness, um, and with a sense of humour. And I'm going to say something that I've never said to Charlie, which is uh, one of the things I've always admired about Charlie is the tremendous difficulties that he's faced in his life. He has never once 
complain to me about the adversity that he's been trialled with. And I think that stood him in great stead for actually dealing with the affairs of the pandemic. We couldn't have had a better mayor, I don't think, uh, to actually cope with the elongated period of time uh, that he has been in office. Uh, members of the public may see his obvious side, which is uh, uh, chairing council, um, dealing with some quite difficult individuals, including me, right, and including Councillor Garrido and others, um, with, as I say, fairness and firmness and a process that we can't actually complain with, uh, complain about. But there's also another side to, uh, to to Charlie, which I've experienced as a fellow ward councillor, because behind the scenes, he has actually still been he's doing his ward work. He has still been working extremely hard on behalf of the residents of Broughton of actually dealing with their everyday problems. Uh, and he's done it with care and compassion during what has been a very difficult period. And the other point I would like to make is I'm really proud of the fact that he's managed to raise £28,000 to to support his charities. And I think that's a remarkable testimony um, to what can be achieved. I think uh, it was summed up t- uh, t- to me um, when we brought representatives from the Ferial Raja Trust who had just been given awards to meet him as a city mayor. Uh, and one of them said to me, uh, uh, as we left, um, having had a, uh, a, an audience with him and uh, Tim, what wonderful people they were, how they were full of compassion, how they were full of caring for the people of the city, but how they would also taken the trouble to listen to people's individual concerns uh, and and dealt with them um, in a very sympathetic way. So, Charlie, um, you're not going to Florida for your retirement. I'm looking forward to spending a great deal of time with you in uh, in Broughton uh, and spending a great deal of time um, with Tim at the cricket in Lancashire as well, where hopefully you might have a bit more spare time to share uh, our mutual concern. But with all of that, I think this city owes you a great deal of debt of gratitude. And it's more than just the councillors owing you a debt of gratitude. It is the people of the city for steering us through what has been a horrendous situation, as I said, with humour, humility, sympathy and caring above all else for the integrity of this council. Um, Enjoy um, your retirement, although not too much of it, because I shall be tormenting you, I'm sure, from time to time. And thank you for all the support you've shown to the city and to me individually. So with that, I take great pleasure in moving the vote of thanks. Thank you, Councillor Mera. I would now like to call upon Councillor James King to second the motion. Uh, Mr. Sarah Morley Mayor, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm delighted to second the motion of thanks to the retiring ceremonial mayor, uh, Councillor Charlie McIntyre and his consort, um, Dr. Tim Warden. And I suppose I should also at this stage congratulate our new ceremonial mayor, Councillor John Mullen and his mayoress, um, Michelle. Looking at Councillor um, Mullen's biographical details, if I may digress for a moment, I note he lived in Broughton for a while. And of course, so does our retiring ceremonial mayor, Councillor Charlie McIntyre and Consort Tim. And as we'll hear in a moment or two, our new deputy ceremonial mayor also lives in Broughton. And yours truly, who was mayor 20 years ago, also live in Broughton. Is this almost a record? Councillor McIntyre and Tim have been excellent representatives of our noble city for the past 19 months or so. And I think, uh, Charlie, you're probably the longest serving ceremonial mayor that we've had. And I'm sure we'll hear from Charlie when he delivers his valedictory speech. He will tell us that he and Tim have visited and graced very many events throughout their long period in office. Sports events, 
cultural events, community events of all sorts, and in all parts of the city and indeed beyond. And he and Tim will have visited parts of the city which they probably didn't know existed. They will have met community organisations they were not aware of. And they will have met so many wonderful, soulful people working in voluntary and charitable organisations for no payment other than for the joy of the task that they were engaged in. It was a pleasure too for me to attend a couple of Charlie's chosen charity events. One such was the Mayor's Ball. It was an all together wonderful event, as those who attended will know. When the band struck up, the busiest man in the night was Dr Tim. He was regularly on the floor and he danced with great aplomb, I have to say. When we'd sit down, I'd look up and there goes Tim again whisking another lucky lady onto the floor. Now, I did a little bit of dancing when I was young and met into, up to the international board. And I have to say that Dr. Tim has dancing style. So Tim maybe strictly will come calling before too long. As you've heard, Councillor Charlie and Tim live very close to me. And it, I used to regularly see Charlie's mayormobile gliding past on its way to or from a great event. I attended our local resilience meeting only yesterday, and I was delighted to report to, that Councillor Charlie will be soon back on the beat in Broughton, and that will be very welcome indeed for all of us. And I know, Charlie, you intend to stand down soon, but in the interim, you will be very welcome back in the team in Broughton. So serial more ceremonial mayor, colleagues, I'd like to thank Charlie and Tim for being excellent ambassadors for our city. And they now, I think, both deserve a long and relaxing rest. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Councillor King. Now I would like to call upon Councillor Les Turner to support the motion of thanks. Thank you, Sir Emmanuel Mayor, and good afternoon, everybody. It gives me great pleasure to support the motion of thanks to the retiring Sir Emmanuel Mayor, Charlie McIntyre, and his consort, Dr. Tim Warden. Together, they served a term of office much longer than anyone could have envisaged. Charlie has chaired the council throughout most of the unprecedented of times. It's difficult to chair the council Anyway, but doing it virtually is another challenge which Charlie has taken all in his stride. Charlie and his consort Tim have been great ambassadors for this city. On a personal note, I have found Charlie to be a very fair, compassionate and caring person. And I wish both him and Tim well for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turner, for that. Now, I would like to put the motion to the members of this council for confirmation. Yep, agreed. 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 Thank you, Council. Now, I would like to invite retired ceremonial mayor, Councillor Charlie McIntyre, to make his valedictory address. Thank you, Mr. Ceremonial Mayor, for allowing me this opportunity to say thanks to the people attending today and those who are joining us from home. If you don't mind, I'll read it because I read better than I actually talk in public. Um, perhaps before I go any further, I need to take time to thank my consort, Dr. Tim Warden, for his support in my role, and my friend Maria Brambra, who attended occasions that meant that we went to church activities and to judgments pies. So thank you very much, Maria. Obviously, there's got to be thanks given to Reverend Christine Threfel, my wonderful civic chaplain, and to Councillor Bormisham for his famous quiz nights. Um, there was thanks as well to Salford Choral Society, MAPAS, and the Campanile Hotel. 
thank you also has to go to Michelle, um, Michelle Lindsay and the Middleton team for all the understanding, the patience that made my year in office such a huge and positive experience. I was surprised to learn that I would be the first wheelchair using ceremonial mayor for Greater Manchester. Stockport this year had a, a mayor who, had, who was an amputee and we used to, we used to uh, fight off each other uh, to see who would get the first prize of being the first ever. Um, she managed to get Manchester Evening News coverage, uh, Granada Reports coverage, and she even got a visit to uh, uh, the Last Leg television programme. And I didn't mind, that was only because her shoes weren't really seemed fit for a mare to use. And I got the visit to New Horizons, which is a 71 feet canal boat in Marple that is made specifically to uh, cater for the needs of people with disabilities who also want to experience canal journeys and cruises. So, you know, we were competitive, but I think I got off best. I've attended similar meetings to this where mayors are able to identify the good works that are happening in Salford. Sometimes they go quietly, but every time they provide something positive to the people who live in Salford. And one of the such cases that I did go at the beginning of my mayoral year was to Peel Park in Little Halton, where there was intergenerational work going on. Uh, they would see the reclamation of their park both in its function and the activities that would be held in uh, by elderly and youth. So that was really, really the first and positive experience I had as ceremonial mayor. Um, I valued to meet uh, people throughout Salford, but perhaps uh, Salford Historical Society was one of the favourites that I had, um, who allowed me to go and see the work that they were involved in, but also to um, announce the winner of 2019 um, Molyneux Book Prize. Also, there was a visit to the Mayor's Parlour by an annual girl who had competed and won the Copley Art Prize, which is set up for children of school age to the age of 14. She managed to win and she managed to have her um, exhibition at the Lowry Theatre Complex. The Copeland Prize is a competition that is set up to engage people, children up to the age of 14 who live in Salford and who live in deprived areas to introduce them to art and to get them interested in pursuing that specialty they might have. I also visited the uh, Traveller Wagons exhibition at, in Salford Art uh, Museum. And um, it also contained the history of the traveller and gypsy communities in Salford. The girls that took me around um, were both from Albion Academy, and they told me of the investment that they made in getting the interior of the caravan to match the ornate sculpture and its heuristic, oh, sorry, heuristic uh, detail of the external features. They were most proud of their skills and mastery of those skills to, to make the event such a wonderful and positive experience. They were also proud and keen that the cultural history would be seen and appreciated and known by the people of Salford. Enjoyed celebrating with families um, as um, we spoke about the different mining communities that Salford still enjoys. And to open a memory garden at uh, Queensway to match the, the several other memorials that are contained within that area. There is the Nikki project, again, it was something that struck me. 
that um, focuses and uh, appreciates the different skills that the people who enjoy their daily services within their uh, organization on a daily basis. Singing with dementia was something I had witnessed previously uh, when my mother-in-law came to stay with us. A decade on, in 2019, um, I attended a ceremonial mayor and was pleased to see it still was popular um, a service as it ever was in Salford, both to the users, their families and their friends in Swinton. Dancing with dementia is also something that is positively appreciated by the service users, the families and their friends. Again, it's in Swinton, good old Swinton. I managed to open uh, the refurbished Pint Pot pub and the 10th birthday of the Star Inn, which is a community pub, co-owned, a cooperative, and both pubs are serving the needs of different communities here in Salford. Improved. When I travelled over the border from Manchester, because I used to live in the USA, other side of Ardog, um, it was something that was never accepted. There could be gay people that lived in Salford. And so in 2019, I got to go and be part of Pride in Salford. And the Pride in Salford is getting to be a regular occurrence in Salford. And it sees families, straight, gay, transgender, all ce celebrating together and appreciating the differences in our community and society. Uh, as part of the Bridgewater Canal Project, I entertained and along with the Institute of Tourist Guides presented the Green Badge, Green Badge med Medals to nine people in Salford who had completed a five month course that allows them to go forward as tourist guides in the area. There's a few that are actually setting up businesses now with the qualification they have earned within this training programme. So good luck to them, it was a good experience to have. I also got to meet with Salford Red's disability rugby team. Uh, it wasn't as rough as I'd, ex uh, I'd expected. It was rather touch rugby than wheelchair banging rugby. Um, it catered for several disabilities. And the one that we managed to meet were people that were in the dementia rugby group. It was really, really eye-opening and enjoyable to speak to them. I was lucky enough to present, uh, to present checks of £500 to three very able women of Salford who were embarking on or continuing in um, from health and research, mainly into women's health and reproduction. Carol services in Salford uh, and Manchester were a must. And again, that's where uh, Maria Bramba stepped in and we both got to enjoy both the music and the dance that was presented. But I must say, in my opinion, Salford was top. They were the carol service above, above all others. We had mappers to take us to that privileged position of being the best because we included everything from dance, poetry reading, steel drum, brass uh, orchestra, music and readings. So yeah, in my opinion, that was the best night completely. And it was catered for by the Campanile Hotel. In addition to the above things that I have mentioned, can I just say that I've also attended and welcomed. I've also welcomed people into the mayor's office or I have been invited by organisations to go in with them in particular. So I would like to say that these included Salford City Council staff for long service and achievement. And a case of the act of bravery as well, uh, like the two people for the environmental services who 
prevented a man from jumping from a bridge. So again, as I said, for services to the community in brave, bravery, I met two NASA scientists, uh, attendees of the annual chess competition from our neighbouring city, our twin cities, German students, uh, visited the parlour to say hello. That was a nightmare. I tried to talk German and I couldn't. Um, volunteer ce celebration event at Ellesmere Shopping Centre, where in the shopping centre we presented prizes to the people who were volunteers in the community. We had looked at redeeming communities. I actually spent um, a really cold and wet Saturday morning uh, singing carols in the street. Um, another organisation that were bringing communities together where they introduced me to a band called the uh, Rolling Tones. They were excellent. I was also able to go and witness um, some of the good work that was happening uh, in Salt of his code, redeeming our communities. Um, I've been to the Together Trust, which started in Salford 150 years ago, providing the education support services for young orphaned boys. In 150 years, I think that's a pretty good organisation. They have, or they were able to show me the awards they were offering for art, music, life, skill, education, fitness, and well-being. And they had a whole exhibition shown at the Lowry Centre. MAPAS was really good because I got to meet some of the parents, but also I was so impressed by that organisation, uh, I asked if their uh, quartet of trombonists would perform at my charity night, which they did very professionally and very entertainingly. Prince's Garden Centre provided uh, the table settings uh, for my mayor's ball as well. So we used recycled, reclaimed um, wooden elements of the park to be able to have our table numbers and perhaps the biggest event that attended was the 200th anniversary of the Peterloo Massacre. And here's an interesting one. I went and witnessed the hanging of the High Sheriff. <laughs> to me, that was very, very funny and strange. I'd never seen it before. I was just hanging up a picture. I've been, I've entertained guides, students, and army cadets. And I went to Barton Airport to visit the airport. And although I didn't take part in the bus trip to get there because it was not accessible, Council Jones, um, it was good to be able to stand at the bottom of the monument and wave up to people and say, hi, I'm here as well. Um, I, every month we have a citizens uh, ceremony and I welcome 360 people who had chosen to come to Salford and make Salford their home. These people were people from Nigeria, Poland, Egypt, Ireland, America, Spain. And it was really good to see that despite the lovely, I would say, picturesque and holiday destinations, they chose to come to Salford to spend their lives. The one thing that we're asked to remember was the culture that they would bring to our city and their involvement in things like our schools and encouraging their kids to take part in the school lessons. I also planted a tree for a Life for a Life project, which is a project that is uh, taking over the whole of the city, uh, where people use uh, planting a tree in commemoration of perhaps loved ones that have passed. Also invited the bugler of the Eccles Remembrance Day service in 2019. You may remember that uh, there's quite a chaos inflicted when somebody started setting off fireworks. And I felt really sorry 
for that man. But I was really admired the man for being able to continue with his bugle rendition of the last post. So these are only a few things that I have taken part with. I've enjoyed meeting the Ukrainian community here in Salford. I've been able to be with the Malayan community at the Christ Christmas festival, festival and the Hamadia Muslim community during their commemoration of fallen black uh, service personnel and also in their Black History Month celebrations. So I may not be the best speaker, but over the year, I've done these things and we had joined uh, help for lobbying councillor or ceremonial mayor. I will get used to that. We managed to achieve a platform lift to allow people with disability to go onto the dais uh, within the council chamber. And we've also got uh, this great British Sign Language Interpreter for council meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, I'd like to say I've had a really good experience. It has offered me a lot, and hopefully I've offered a lot to future generations coming into the council, but coming into Salford as a city. And in closing, I'd just like to say thank you. Congratulations again, Mr. Ceremonial Mayor, to you and your mayoress for this year. And I wish you every luck and success in your role. And I hope you enjoy it the way I've enjoyed mine. And I thank you very much. My thanks again to Councillor Charlie McIntyre and his consort, Dr. Tim Warren. Thank you for everything you've done for the city. Okay, I'm going to now move on in the agenda. And at this point, I now call upon Councillor Heather Fletcher to move the motion to appoint Councillor Anne-Marie Humphreys to the Office of Deputy Ceremonial Mayor for the municipal year of 2020 to 2021. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It gives me great pleasure to move the motion to appoint my very good friend, <coughs> Councillor Marie Humphreys, to the office of Deputy Ceremonial Mayor for the municipal year 2020-2021. I believe that she has a diverse wealth of experience and all the right personal qualities to represent our great city of Salford in this office. Councillor Humphreys is Salford born and bred, but she is of both Italian and Irish heritage. She has a chemistry degree and has worked in both the scientific world and in retail for a number of years. Councillor Humphreys has been a Salford city councillor for 16 years. For 14 of those years, she was my local councillor here in Kersal. In that time, she has held many important roles on the council, including executive support for culture and leisure, as well as executive support for children's services and for the environment. She has chaired the council's corporate parenting panel and also the Environment and Community Safety Scrutiny Committee. Councillor Humphreys has been both chair and vice chair of the Statutory Functions Committee on AGMA, which funded the arts and sports for many organisations across Greater Manchester. Furthermore, she has sat on the boards of Salford Community Leisure, Greater Manchester Waste Disposal Authority, Port Health Authority and Salix Homes. In her spare time, of which she has little, uh, and before the pandemic, she particularly enjoyed going to the theatre. I would say that was her main hobby. She has also been on the boards of the Royal Exchange Theatre and the Lowry, Lowry Theatre to reflect 
her great hobby. Now on to a little bit more personal stuff. I first met Councillor Humphreys when I joined the Labour Party 11 years ago. I met her at a local Labour Party meeting. However, we formed a close friendship some seven years ago. It was in March 2014 that I finally decided that I would like to become a local councillor. I therefore asked my friend, who encouraged me, how should I start to achieve this aim? He replied, ring up your local curls or councillors and offer to help them. Accordingly, I rang up the late councillor Peter Connor. He, of course, was a great friend and mentor to us both. And I can hear him saying now, oh, Heather, get a move on. So I shall. Within an hour, Councillor Peter Connor came round with Councillor Humphreys. They were both holding several loaded bags. I inquired, what's in these bags? Councillor Connor replied, leaflets are in these bags to get Anne-Marie re-elected. You say you want to be a councillor? Well, you can start by helping Anne-Marie in her campaign by delivering all these leaflets. So that is how our friendship blossomed from that day forth. She also gave me considerable advice when I, I was selected as a candidate for Swinton South in 2015. As a person, I've always found Councillor Anne-Marie Humphreys to be a very good listener, a helpful person, and willing to give constructive advice based on her considerable local government knowledge. She's sociable, very good conversationalist, professional and conscientious. I'm certain that she will be an excellent representative of the city of Salford in this role. So I'm delighted to be able to move the motion for her to be appointed to the post of Deputy Ceremonial Mayor for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. I now call upon Councillor Jane Hamilton to second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Ceremonial Mayor. Um, like previous speakers, uh, I'd like to congratulate Councillor Charlie McIntyre and Dr. Tim Warden on having done a fantastic job. I'm happy to second the motion of Councillor Anne-Marie Humphreys to the Office of Deputy Ceremonial Mayor from 2020 to 2021. She is full of personality and knowledge. I'm sure she will fully support you, our new ceremonial mayor, Councillor John Mullen, in all his endeavours as ceremonial mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. I now call upon Councillor Karen Garrido to support the motion. Ceremony Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to support uh, uh, Councillor Anne-Marie Humphreys to the Office of Deputy Ceremonial Mayor for the years 2020-21. We all hope you have a great time, which I'm sure you will, working with the new Ceremonial Mayor. Good luck with that, Anne-Marie. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Garrido. Can I now put the motion to the members of the council for confirmation? <clears throat> yes. Agreed. 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 OK, thank you, council members. I must, at some point, have a quick email to all councillors just to see how many of us are actually claiming Irish heritage today. So quite interested in, on, on how many come from that background. But on that note, once again, I'd like to thank you for the, um, the time that you all took today. Thank my family for attending. And with that, I'd like to now officially close this meeting. Thank you once again, everybody. Bye. Bye.
Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.